Greetings everyone and welcome to the channel. I am your gracious host Adeptus Artorum and in today's short video we are going to be continuing our series on the Chaos Knights, this time delving into a specific knight house. Now due to the popularity of the first video I thought that I would continue the series and as time goes on I will add more short videos discussing individual knight houses. Just remember that the better a video does, the more you guys enjoy it, the more likely it is that I will continue discussing that topic in the future on future content. Now, as before mentioned, this video is going to be another delve into the lore of the fallen nobles of the Chaos Knights, but more specifically, a single Chaos Knight house. We are going to look at a number of Chaos Knight houses in the future and their respective history. And if you guys have a specific night house that you want to know more about, go on ahead and drop your suggestion in the comments below and I'll be sure to consider it for future content. Now, before I go into the specific night house that we are going to be discussing in this video, I just want to briefly explain the difference between the types of renegade night houses. Now, you can find a slightly more detailed explanation as to what these houses actually are in my previous Chaos Knights video, which will be linked at the end of this video. Though I do suggest going back and giving the first video a watch before you watch this one. But just to give you guys who haven't seen the first video an idea of what these houses actually are, I'm going to briefly explain them here. So, in essence, there are two types of fallen knight houses. Firstly, iconoclast houses, which are houses that have already become before the beginning of the galaxy-spanning civil war known as the Horus Heresy. Iconoclast houses usually bear allegiance to one of the many traitor legions or warbands of the heretic Astartes. Now, the second type of renegade house is known simply as an infernal house, and infernal houses hold allegiance to the dark iteration of the Adeptus Mechanicus and their world-ending titan legions known as the Dark Mechanicum. Now that we have covered the essence of what these house types are, I'm going to move on and discuss the specific Chaos Knight house and topic of this video. So, the Renegade House that I am here to discuss with you guys today is considered an iconoclast house and have served the ruinous powers of chaos for many Terran centuries. The house in question is named House Herpetrax. Now, House Herpetrax's knights sport green and white house colours with a golden trim and their heraldry is a black serpent wearing a crown. Now this house is uniquely intriguing to me as this house is one of the few houses within the Questa Traitoris whom have never served the Imperium of Man in any capacity. That's right, this Chaos Knight House has never fought for nor served the Imperium, period. Meaning that this Knight House and its respective Knight World have managed to remain independent of the Imperium since their initial colonisation in the Age of Technology. Now, this feat was not achieved through mere luck. This is not a case of the Imperium just not stumbling across or subsequently discovering their homeworld of Jathadra. In fact, to the contrary, this world was discovered and invaded by a sizeable imperial force in the late 36th millennium. Now, through their immense connection to the warp and the ruinous powers of chaos undivided, these terrifying knights were able to essentially call upon said power, granting them the strength needed to throw back the invading imperial forces and maintain their independence from the Imperium. Ever since this day, the fallen nobles of House Herpetrax have remained a thorn in the Emperor's side, causing destruction and death as much as possible within the borders of his realm. Now, the homeworld of House Herpetrax is in near proximity to many warp rifts, providing the opportunity for those within the house's ranks to bathe within its corrupting influence. Beneath the planet's surface lay the remains of countless envoys housed in many crypts the Jadathrums refer to as Wells of Shame. Now, House Herpetrax 
is an oddity among renegade night houses. The reason being the before mentioned fact that the house has never been sworn in allegiance to the Imperium nor the Mechanicus. In fact, the world of Jadathra was not discovered by original ancient Mechanicum's exploratory fleets during their vast exploration in the age known as the Great Crusade. Now, the first point of contact established with the Renegade House was in the late 36th millennium, when a rogue trader named Cheris Drake was exploring a vast section of space that had previously been isolated by warp vortexes and therefore unable to be charted. Now, as before mentioned, the Terrans soon followed in the footsteps of the rogue trader, and upon sending their envoys to the planet, they were met with unequivocally violent opposition. In fact, the envoys sent were brutally flayed and executed upon presenting terms. The nobles of House Herpetrax loathed the prospect of aligning themselves with the Imperium, and upon the flayed skin of the envoys, they etched their adamant refusals. Now, it was upon these horrific memorandums that Imperial agents were able to gather a portion of knowledge pertaining to the history of the Renegade Knight House. The Jadathran's grim etchings revealed that during the horrors of the Old Night, basically the Age of Strife, and the long Terran millennia before, they had in fact already been approached many times by individuals claiming themselves to be the Emperor of Mankind, and that none of the previous claimants had shown anything equating to equal metal to the royal lines of Jadathra exclaiming how they would swear loyalty to a corpse sat atop a throne even less so. They went on to deny all claims of the Emperor's sovereignty and proclaimed that all mankind would bow at their feet or be viciously and inevitably exterminated. Now, it was at this stage that the Imperium declared the House Iconoclast and began a planet-wide siege against them. Orbital bombardments were sent forth against their castles and keeps, which were swiftly followed by ground-based assaults by both Astra Militarum armoured and infantry regiments. The fallen nobles of House Herpetrax stood stalwart and immovable. It was at this point that fate would seemingly intervene, as strange and debilitating mutations would spread throughout the ranks of the Imperial forces, and the once prevalent warp vortexes closed in around the system once more. The final communications received from the Imperium's forces within the system were from none other than Cheris Drake, stating that she'd withdrawn and hinting towards the foul history of the planet and the house housed there, implicating that there was evidence that the nobles of Herpetrax had practiced diabolical chaos rituals and unfathomable heretical sorceries for millennia. A century later, the Kreen worlds would feel this unfortunate fact for themselves, as the fallen nobles of House Herpetrax murdered maimed and destroyed their way through their system, spreading terror and leaving nothing but the flames of destruction in their wake. So now we get to the before mentioned Kreen worlds and the brutal campaign launched at this destination, leading to it being referred to as the Kreen Scar. Now, as you can imagine what this essentially was, was a brutal campaign launched by the fallen nobles of House Herpetrax throughout the entire network of planetary systems. Now, this conflict cannot be understated as it spanned over 100 light years and the systems within served as a vital manufactorum hub in the galactic south of the Ultima Segmentum. Now, though the Astra Militarum and the Adeptus Mechanicus concentrated their efforts towards combating the Knights of House Herpetrax, the fallen nobles pushed their campaign forward at an alarming speed, essentially cutting through any and all resistance placed in front of them. The unfortunate citizens of worlds that were conquered by the Chaos House were ultimately enslaved and put to agonising, backbreaking work, excavating the foundations beneath the soaring hive cities in which they once resided. 
Of course, billions perished in this brutal process, crushed to mulch beneath hulking slabs of ferrocrete, buried alive in absolutely catastrophic rock slides and cave-ins. Or of course, their bodies could simply take no more after the back-breaking work, collapsing from exhaustion and starvation. Yet through the exhausting and deadly work performed by the enslaved citizens upon several of these planets, the fallen noble overlords unearthed exactly what they were searching for. On several of these excavations were uncovered the long-forgotten remains of ancient Long March starships, pulled from beneath the earth the long-forgotten remnants of failed human colonies from the dark age of technology. These immeasurably precious cargoes were transported back to the fallen night world of Jadathra and unfortunately, yet predictably, the surviving slave populations were systematically exterminated by massed orbital bombardments spanning the entirety of the conquered planets. Over the course of an entire generation, this belt of once proud Imperial Manufactorum worlds was transformed into a ruined and lifeless stretch of space known simply as the Kreen Scar. And in my previous Chaos Knights video, I stated that a House of Chaos Knights could essentially bring an entire world to its knees, and I honestly don't think that there's anyone who could argue that after learning of the horrific events that befell the unfortunate citizens of the Kreen Worlds. Now, every time I make a video on a specific Chaos Nighthouse, I'm going to endeavour to briefly mention a couple of notable nobles within the house's ranks. Now, some may be extremely brief and some may have a more storied bio. This is simply down to limited information, and if you guys do know more information about any of these mentioned nobles, then please don't hesitate to drop that information in the comments below. I would be interested to hear it. Now, for House Herpetrax, the nobles that I deem as notable are as follow. Firstly, we have the Knight Despoiler, Obstinate Will, piloted by Dom Kahar. Now, this noble is a master in siege warfare and has piloted his respective suit through many campaigns of bloody slaughter, spreading fear at the very mention of his name. Secondly, we have the Knight Rampager, Unflinching Wrath, piloted by Dam Barrett's. Barris is the royal executioner, and as such, she seeks out any and all that have incurred the anger of House Herpetrax, annihilating them without question, leaving nothing but bloody mulch in her wake. Now, last, but certainly not least, is the feared Knight Desecrator, Eternal Dread. Now, Eternal Dread is piloted by the fallen noble known as Dam Marta. Now, this noble has been at the forefront of many campaigns of anguish and destruction, serving as the harbinger of destruction for the lances of House Herpetrax for a very long time. In personal combat, this devastating noble boasts victory upon over a dozen Imperial Knights attempting to stop its advance. Though this knight has received seemingly mortal wounds on many occasions, the determination of its bloodthirsty pilot has seen it prevail and continue to crush enemies upon the field of battle. Dam Marta is famed amongst the many fallen nobles of House Herpetrax, being the first aspirant in many centuries to successfully bond with Eternal Dread's throne Mechanicum. The process of bonding took a Jadathran month, yet regardless of the time taken, she was able to conquer the Technogeists that had essentially consumed so many aspirants before her. Yet this process left her entirely fused to the throne, her skin melded to the surrounding metal frame, and because of this, Dam Marta is able to feel all the pain and relish in every sensation from every blow dealt to the suit as if it was her own flesh. I must say, 
not something that I personally would wish to experience. Now, this is the part where I usually leave you guys with a quote. But for these videos regarding Chaos Knight houses, I'm going to do something a little different and leave you with the motto of the respective house. We bow to no one. Now, this has been a short video discussing House Herpetrax, an iconoclast house of the Chaos Knights. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I aim to make this into an ongoing series where I will discuss individual knight houses, knights within them, and the stories surrounding them. If you guys have any specific night houses that you want to know more about, or of course any content in general that you wish to know more about, factions, forces, weapons, or anything beyond, as always, drop a comment in the section below. If you guys enjoy my content, please hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing so that you stay up to date with all of my future content. I really appreciate the support and it helps me to continue to enjoy doing this for you guys. With that, I have been your gracious host, Adeptus Artorum, and I thank you for watching.